So my name is Satoko Rubin. Um, I'm attending the uh, um, University of Connecticut uh, Periodontology program. Uh, I'm originally from Japan. Um, I went to dental school at Tufts and I went to prosto, uh, prosthodontics program at BU, Boston University. And I practiced for four years and came to Connecticut because my husband is uh, from Connecticut and I started the residency last year. Uh, my father is a dentist and he actually was practicing as a periodontist. In Japan, um, the specialty program is not really there, so he has trained prosthodontics and then he came here to study for like a periodontics and at the time they had a lot of like private institute back then and he took a courses and went back and practiced. Uh, so. I was kind of interested in dentistry because of my father, but you know, when you actually graduate um, from high school, you kind of have to decide what you want to do. Um, so at the time, I kind of said, I want to become a dentist right after high school. And because of his experience, he told me, maybe I should come to the United States because the dentistry is advanced in this country uh, than in Japan. So. Um, so I decided to, you know, came here and luckily they had that program that's combined and um, I um, attended the college three years and then uh, went to Tufts for four years. So that was kind of a com combined program and that was basically the whole reason why. I was kind of afraid that if I was going to like the industry or not, but eventually I really liked it and here I am, like still kind of going through the path of everything, so. The whole purpose again was, you know, because I was coming from other country, my purpose was to go back. And when I was to go back, I kind of wanted to have a specialty degree. At the same time, you know, I'm the type of the person that I have to experience to kind of know what I like. So at that time, in, I mean, in dental school, what you get most exposed is the restorative. And, you know, I, I was only interested in restorative. And at the same time, I wanted to kind, kind of buy the experience almost that, you know, like you go out and have like 10 years of experience. Meantime, like you can go through the program for prosthodontics. And I thought that that would be the case that I can kind of, you know, be exposed to it. And it was totally different learning experience, but, you know, that was the bottom line. I wanted to kind of get exposed to more complex cases and, you know, restore, uh, restorative part aspect of the dentistry. After I graduated from the uh, prosthodontics program, I started to work uh, in a group practice. And um, I, had uh, several ex experiences with the working with the uh, you know um, same team periodontist and everything and uh, it was great in the sense that you know you have a individual you know speciality people in the practice but I was limited to practice with certain you know people as a periodontist and it was very difficult to kind of coordinate the treatment plan. And I was, you know, trained to have full comprehensive treatment plan for a lot of different complex, complex cases. And um, one of the toughest part was that I had to kind of, you know, get together to discuss the case. And the bottom line was always that, you know, periodontist says, well, this is not very predictable. I cannot do this treatment, you know, even though I wanted to go for that, you know, way. You know, we had to work together, and if the periodontist, the other person says, no, we can't do that, I was kind of only limited into the way. But in a sense, I also wanted to find out how realistic my expectation from the restorative part side is, you know, actually uh, applicable to the, you know, the, the perio side. Um, so in a sense, I started to want to wanna start to know how much I can take care as a whole treatment plan and that's why I started to become more interested at the same time you know uh, in a different country like again in Japan um, 
there, like I said, there wasn't, there isn't a lot of like a specialty. So a general dentist actually takes like a focal comprehensive treatment and they do, you know, do the continuing education and everything. And they do try to take care, you know, all the patients start to finish. And of course you have to learn so much, you know, uh, um, material and, you know, um, everything. But, you know, they were able to do from the start to finish, like you don't have to really, you know, send out to relying on somebody to finish your, you know, case for the you know, whole treatment plan. And that was something that I really was fascinated to do. Um, it's not like I'm giving up, but, you know, the coordination of it was somewhat difficult for me, um, you know, because of my experience and because of, you know, what I didn't know. So that's how I started to become more interested. And, and as I, you know, started to practice, it, it, there are so many things that you can learn about. And, you know, I kept thinking that, you know, I should, if I were to learn, I want to learn it properly. So that's how I decided to come back. Yeah. So the prosthodontics is, uh, is the specialty that takes care of uh, more advanced in the treatment plan that for people who has collapsed their function, like not just like one single tooth that they're having a problem, it's more of uh, you know full mouth uh, rehabilitation that patient may need a denture, they may need uh, implant supported prosthesis. Uh, those are the things that we get three years of a training in, in intense um, um, for reconstructing patients' mouths. Um, so it's kind of overlaps with the restorative, meaning you know general dentistry. But we do have a, a training of how to restore uh, in the old kind of different materials to different processes. Um, so that's the speciality that we do. Um, and the periodontics is uh, somewhat easier to understand. It's like a, almost like a for gum specialist. So we take care of periodontitis uh, and you know implant. Uh, it is sur surgical you know procedure that you do underneath the you know gum. So that's the paradigm text. Yeah. So when you look at the tooth, um, you need to, I mean, when you look at the patient, do the examination, uh, it's not just that they have just a crown part of the tooth. You have a cavity or you have some kind of problem. You do have also supporting structure of the teeth. And, you know, when, when you have periodontal disease, uh, you need to kind of look at not just the tooth, but the whole supporting structure. And when you make a treatment plan, you can't just, you know, put the crown on top of the diseased tooth. Uh, you need to also look at the foundation of the, you know, whole structure. So when we treatment plan, especially for full mouth, you know, cases, like the, we're looking not just the one tooth, but the full quadrant or full arch, uh, we need to look at how predictable the treatment can be and um, we have to kind of look at the both way of the crown part of the teeth to the you know inside the gum part of the teeth and make the whole treatment plan that's gonna kind of you know make the final outcome to be very predictable so that's kind of the main you know key to you know have a solid treatment plan for the patient so The important portion, either I like it or not, it is somewhat very difficult or challenging for patients to realize. Uh, you know, the, the periodontal disease almost is like always happens to be the people who's kind of negligent about their oral hygiene and everything. So um, the, our challenge is, is to let them realize what their condition is. And I think when they realize and try to start to become better you know, compliant patient to, you know, clean the teeth and when they say, you know, or when I see that their oral hygiene is improving, which you're going to need that at the end, whatever the treatment plan you're going to do, you need to have that at the end. 
um, and I, when I see that to start with, I think that's kind of pretty rewarding for, you know, it's just a small step, but that's something that you're kind of intervening patients, you know, life and, you know, starting from there, so. It's, it's pretty much all about, you know, final outcome. And it's easy to actually make the final outcome for restoration or the surgery or whatever the treatment comes to the patient. It is easy to offer it to them and easy to perform. Not easy, but you know. Um, but most important thing is the longevity of the treatment, like how much they can, you know, uh, um, maintain or sustain those procedures that or treatment that we give to the patient. And I think, you know, as a prosthodontist that when I used to practice, I really liked the way that it came out, but you know, you, you don't know if this prosthesis is gonna last for, you know, five years, ten years or one year it's gonna break. So I think you know, it's kind of combination with the, you know, periodontics, but, you know, as a whole, you know, thing, I mean, whole treatment or whole outcome that I really like about the industry is that, you know, the fact that I can offer a patient something that I can be, you know, sure that, okay, I mean, I cannot be 100% sure, but I can probably talk about predictability wise, okay, I can offer this patient, uh, this treatment to you. And, you know, if they ask me how long would it last, I can pretty much, you know, answer that question, not to the extent that it's exactly, and I can't guarantee or anything, because it's all depending on a patient too. But I think it's very important. And I, I think I like the fact that I have a little bit better understanding now how long or how much um, you know those processes can last. I think it's very difficult, um, you know, nowadays with all the you know uh, student loans and you know dental schools are very expensive. And uh, one of the challenges that uh, a lot of people, especially you know who, who has uh, loans and everything, cannot specialize even though they're interested in doing so. Um, but I find it that when I did the prost, uh, um, prosthodontics, uh, it was right after dental school, and I didn't necessarily appreciate the all education that was, that was given to me because I just didn't have experience to, you know, kind of think it was all new to me and all, you know, um, kind of just not really coming to me because. It, Whatever you're gonna learn, you always gonna apply to everyday practice uh, uh, afterward. And um, now that I have practiced for a little bit, even though it was a little bit of an amount of time, I think now I appreciate so much more. I mean, some of the education is pretty much the same. I mean, the treatment planning and you know the basic uh, education of dentistry we learn it in from the dental school, and I'm kind of like repeating like the second and the third time. Um, but now I really appreciate, you know, what to take as, you know, clinical uh, uh, application um, to it that I feel that, you know, if they're not, you know, they can't do a specializing, um, once they start practicing, once we start practicing, it's difficult to come back, but if you have a passion for it, I don't think they should ever give up on coming back because you're going to appreciate so much more on having, you know, having experience and coming back. So, I mean, my encourage to people or dental students are that, you know, if you want to specialize, you know, uh, you don't have to do it right after dental school. You can always come back and, you know, just have that passion to learn, you know, in the future. E e either way, you know, if you're doing the general dentistry, you still have to learn so much more, um, you know, every day because you have to, especially general dentists, um, they have to cover whole field of dentistry. Um, you know, you can be somewhat 
you know, uh, find the you know the niche of you know doing some dentistry that you're comfortable with. But even though uh, even that, I mean, you still gonna cover a lot of patient. And if you have a passion to learn, I think you can always come back.